Hey, what's up? This is Acne Studios here. Acronym drops have been getting smaller and smaller. Gone are the big explosive season openings, and now we're getting a little bit more of a trickle. So we have here released uh, this Monday was the first drop of FY2122. And there are only three new pieces and one restocked piece from the last season that are currently available to buy. There's also a couple of unreleased new products that are teased in the product photos for this stuff, which of course we can also talk about since that's now now public knowledge. Normally I wouldn't do a video about such a small drop like this, but I think not only is there a lot to talk about with all of these individual pieces, but I quite like all of them as well, so I wanted to do a little bit more on them for that reason. First off, let's look at the two pairs of pants, because I think both of these are pretty interesting. We've got the P36E and the P37DS. They're both brand new models, they've both got slightly more relaxed cuts, which I think is more on trend than the slim tapered shapes that you've probably seen a lot of in techwear, certainly that I wear quite a lot. P37 is my favorite of the two. I think it's got a nice no-nonsense straight cut that's still got a whole load of features that are kind of chill in there in a little bit of a subtle low-key kind of way, including some fairly new stuff. So the cargo pockets use Acronym's tension zip system. This is pretty new. The first time they used this was on a, a very limited release experimental version of the J1 that came out earlier this year and was only available to a select few people. But essentially that includes an extra material fold at the front of the pocket and an extended zip track on one side, allowing for easier one-handed operation and a design that's both very expandable, can accommodate a lot of stuff without looking too bulky and really altering the overall silhouette of the pants. The downside of that, you don't get a 100% seal on the zip. There is always going to be this tiny little kind of open bit on the edge. So it means, of course, water ingress, things like that are technically possible, but provided they've got this design right and it works kind of as it looks like it does in the product pictures, then I think this will combine, it'll be a really nice balance between good carrying capacity, decent levels of security, and easy access as well, whilst looking good and keeping things pretty under the radar. My only potential concern, and this is something we'll really find out once people start getting these in hand, is when these pockets are fully loaded and you've got weight pressing up against the inside of that extra material fold, whether that will make it more difficult to do the tension zip up, and whether it will keep that material folded inside, or whether it will want to kind of billow outwards, and then you'd have to use your other hand to kind of hold the fold in while you do up the zip. Anyway, not only do these cargo pockets have sub pockets, so great for organization, but you'll also find in the main pockets, Acronym's patented deep pocket design, which personally I think works really well. It's essentially a split inside the pocket itself, so it kind of allows for natural organization. So small things will kind of fall through into a little kind of extra compartment almost, and the bigger things will stay kind of higher up in a different place in the pocket. So it's very easy to find the things that you're looking for. Definitely an underrated feature. Dual phone pockets as well, which are great if you're a drug dealer with two phones, or if you're a lefty like me and you like having it on the left-hand side and you like having the choice. You've also got back pockets there that are not zipped, but they're kind of concealed by this extra little material fold at the back there. So so in terms of carrying capacity, storage options, you've got a lot of different things there. This aspect is a little harder to quantify, but the articulation and the overall construction of these look really nice and pretty interesting as well. For those that don't know, Acronym use what they call fit blocks in the creation of their products. They're kind of like guidelines or blueprints that inform the tailoring or the overall construction of their different items. So you might have two pairs of pants with totally different product IDs, but they're built using the same fit block, which means that at some level they share some kind of DNA, even if the final look and the overall features they present are totally different. The P37 uses a brand new fit block, meaning that this, at a kind of base, at a DNA level, is different to any other pant that Acronym have come out with today. You can see in the full length shots how these have quite an aggressive and slanted look at the front, but then fall straight downwards by the time that you get to the lower leg. That's the work of the knee articulation and the material darts that you'll find at the shin. It's about making these comfortable and easy to move around in and looking good at the same time and I think these are more flattering than a regular straight pair of pants. And I just love that looking at these you would not expect them to have the level of carrying capacity that they do. Um, they don't look like big heavy duty bulky military tactical cargoes. They've got that kind of sleekness to them. They're a little bit futuristic but they still have that slightly more relaxed looking cut and that's definitely something that I would like to own and experiment more with. So they blend subtle design, loads of features and of course that really nice shoulder dry skin material too. It's a pretty well-rounded pant. I think this is gonna do a lot of things. It's gonna be pretty easy to wear and style as well. 
yeah, there's a lot to like. And then we have the P36E, another fully featured pant with a drop crotch this time and a kind of straight fit down the leg. There's also some interesting points from a construction perspective, but the big new thing feature-wise is this new waistband which cinches and tightens from the back which, yeah, is pretty much exactly the opposite of what you would expect, but the result is a much cleaner look too. There's also garages at the back as well to hide the excess draw cords, so if you're not a fan of those little dangly straps that are pretty common in acronym products such as the more recent P30ADS, well you're in luck because those draw cords are in an unconventional place and they can be physically hidden as well. You better hope that your friends don't know about these pants though or else they are going to be coming up behind you and just pulling these straight open, because yeah, these do have a nice quick release mechanism at the back there too. You're gonna get pantsed in public big time and it maybe is gonna take a little bit of getting used to doing this new kind of cinching mechanism but in theory it's certainly gonna be very easy to remove them so why not have an experiment with some different stuff. The encapsulated nylon, the relaxed fit with that drop crotch, there's ventilation zips at the side too which I can't think of any other acronym pants that do that. All of those three combined are gonna make this a really nice warmer weather pant but of course they retain that indisputably acronym look. These also have some really cool construction and that you'll notice these double pleats both at the front and the back. It gives you this really cool twist down the leg and that's mirrored at the bottom of the pant with these angled zip cuffs which are designed not just to look good but for easier access and ability to change the fit of these. It's almost like they think about this stuff when they're designing it. Weird, huh? Anyway, they've got one more cool thing that's worth talking about I suppose. Next to the ventilation zips, they've got these vertical entry back pockets. I'm not sure if these have been used on other acronym pants as well but they do remind me of the Nike ACG woven pants from three or four years ago now, which of course Errolson did work on too, so it's possible that's a kind of feature that's been taken from that. But uh, it was something that I liked on those pants, so it's cool to see that again too. So the pants are looking pretty good I think, but there's a few top half things to talk about as well. The only new thing that has been released so far is the J36S. There have been quite a few J36s over the last couple of seasons, which I suppose is testament to its popularity, and there is definitely a lot to like. There's a surface level similarity, of course, to the J1, what with that flak pocket, although this one is angled for easier access. Some features are similar, of course, interrupts, gravity pockets, sleeve hitch tabs, escape zip, jacket sling, all of these kinds of things that you would expect from a full featured acronym jacket. But there's a couple of differences in here as well. One of the things that I really like is this magnetic closure which is underneath the pocket. If you know the Nike Lab ACG deploy jacket, similar functionality to what you'll see there, although implemented well, implemented in the same way, but for a different purpose. So you can use that to just kind of close the jacket. You can't be bothered to do it up properly. Sometimes you just want to keep it easy and casual, you know, but you also don't want an open jacket flapping around. Also the very structured looking and very protective looking collar design I think is really cool. And part of the reason for that is that it incorporates, of course, a stowable hood, but that is stowed on the inside of this collar rather than on the outside, which keeps the back looking super clean. A couple of changes from previous versions, apparently the hood material has changed from Gore-Tex shake dry to something else not exactly sure what if it's a kind of Gore-Tex branded thing or something else but yeah apparently that is different um, apparently also a couple of centimeters longer as well which fairly minor difference but there it is but of course the main big change is this new color well new for the J36 at least which they're calling night Apart from the J1A GTKP, which is back there, blue is not a colour that is particularly heavily used by acronym. Before that, we're looking back to 2016 with the P10A CH, which was made from industrial micro twill, which is something that acronym no longer actively uses. And there's a few other products that came in that material that use that colour as well, like the P23TSCH. If you go back into the archives, there's also the petrol colour, which is kind of blue, which they used on a few things. And they did actually use uh, night coloured stots on a few older products too but there's not that many examples. I think this is a great update. I know people like to say that navy and black doesn't work very well. I kind of disagree. I think that this is a really nice combination. That extra bit of lightness, I think gives it a tiny little bit of contrast wearing it with black pants, just helps the jacket stand out a little bit better. But it's not a super flashy or eye melting color or anything by any means. The stocks material that this is made from is not gonna be to everyone's taste. Some people, particularly if you live in very wet climates, you're gonna prefer the nice crunchy water resistance of the Gore-Tex shell, but if rain is not so much of a concern for you, then you might like the quieter, slightly more comfortable Stotts material. 
material and that is going to of course break in over time as well and you'll get that nice kind of fading going on which I'm sure with this blue color will end up looking really nice. Hopefully we see more stuff in this color I think it's really cool maybe some nice night stots pants. The other top is the LA6BAD this is not a new thing this is a restock it came out last year but on its first release sold out incredibly quickly um, so it's good that there's another chance for people to get one of these if they want one. Um, I did get it last year and I've got a fair bit of use out of it and I really really like it even though it is quite delicate and quite fragile that's its main downside for sure but if you want to know a bit more about the LA6B I did do a dedicated video about that so you can go and check that out. That's not quite the only other top though there were a few things that were teased or shown off in these product pictures that haven't actually dropped with this release. One of those is the J68 in a Prima Loft version. Um, there was a Stotts version that came out in 2018 which I've got to say I do prefer that older one to this one here just because I like that slimmer and the sleeker look that you get with Stotts rather than the kind of bulky insulated thing. Although that said there's not that many insulated acronym jackets out there relative to the shells at least so more choices in that regard is uh, is definitely welcome. And it does present a cool alternative to the J58WS which is their other insulated jacket that's currently still available. Um, I would probably go more in the J58 direction personally compared to this but everyone's going to have their preference. The other teaser jacket though is much more up my street the J89 AD and yet that AD suffix means that it uses the same alpha direct material as the LA6B AD which I bought last year got on really well with. So it's nice to see this really cool material used in a different cut. This is a kind of Nuragi cardigan type thing, more substantial looking than the shirt for sure. Apparently also comes with an orc zip as well, which means that it'll zip into acronym shells, like the J1 that's back there. So I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the acronym ecosystem. That's of course something we'll see more of once the product actually drops and we get the full suite of product pictures. And maybe that will reveal a couple of other features that are not immediately present from these pictures too. This definitely feels like something with a lot of flexibility and the potential to get a lot of wear out of. You can of course use it as a mid layer to provide some nice comfort and a bit of warmth and insulation, but also have this as an outer layer and it's a nice comfy, casual garment that you can pretty much chuck on with anything whether you're just walking around the house or whether you want to go out for some reason. The reception on this in general seems pretty positive as well so this might end up being one of the hot ticket items this season but yeah nonetheless I'm really looking forward to this one releasing personally. And that is it from Acronym so far this season. There are of course going to be more drops over the next few months that are releasing some of those at least the products that we have seen in these product pictures so far but of these ones these things that have dropped and have been shown off so far uh, is there a particular one that's standing out to you? I think it's probably clear enough from this video, the P37 and the J89AD are uh, really the top ones for me. I'm super interested in both of those things, but everyone's got their preference for sure. I think the J36 is honestly really nice. I think people might dismiss it because it's not black, but I think that gives it a little bit of extra charm, makes it a bit more unique and identifiable too. We have to be aware, of course, this is not necessarily a great time to be selling expensive luxury fashion products hard to say how much that's going to affect the demand for this stuff but I do think there's a lot here to like both from the more seasoned acronym purchases because there is some cool new stuff here and even relative newcomers to the brand I think can get something nice out of these items. Anyway let me know if you've got a particular preference down there in the comments I'm going to be checking through them as always and if you enjoyed the video please do give it a like if you like taking this little uh, look through acronym this little tour because um, it is super appreciated and again thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Massive thanks to everyone's support on last week's video. I'm recording this on Wednesday. It's already got 10,000 views, which is mad. Um, so yeah, really glad you guys enjoyed that one. I will call out though um, the comment that I pinned from Rachel um, saying about kind of new research, saying that those buff and those gator type products are actually not the right thing to be wearing in terms of uh, virus protection and reducing transmission and stuff. So yeah, according to new research, advice is don't wear those, stick to the kind of hygiene mask type design, they're much better. And shout out to everyone that gave extra suggestions for different masks that I didn't put in the list as well. Of course, the more options that people have, the better. So yeah, do appreciate you guys giving your thoughts there. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. If you want to see some more videos, there's going to be links at the top. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you've got this far, you probably are subscribed. But if you're not, 
there's a link at the side as well so you can do that if you want to. And uh, I will say as well, we are very, very close to 50,000 subscribers, which is that, you know, that represents an absolutely massive community, which I'm super thankful for. So uh, thanks to everyone for being part of that. And then uh, we'll have to do some kind of cool celebration video type thing. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that's everything from me. So uh, I'm out. See you later.